beaches, bunnies and bucks. Paul shows us why the versatile 22250 is his favourite round. Versatile, deadly and flat. Carp match revolution, we see if the new generation of thermal spotters work as fish finders. Follow the money, how vegan bankers are trying to exclude hunting and shooting from the economy. Cancelled, straight away, not allowed an account, not allowed anything, goodbye. We're giving away this £200 target pistol to viewers of Field Sports Extra, find out about that. We have news, we have hunting YouTube, welcome to Field Sports Britain. Hunting gives us access to some extraordinary terrain, landscapes and permissions. On our trip to Aberdeenshire, Sergio Couto shows us some of the delights of his roast stalking grounds. From beaches to forest to farmland. And today we are visiting all of them to showcase the flexibility of Paul's favourite round, the 22250. In Scotland it's a legal calibre for roe deer, so we're looking at a multi-location, multi-species sort of day. Paul. David. 22250, sell it to me. Why do you love the 22250? Um, it is very accurate, not much recoil, quite versatile, deadly, oh. and flat. The soft nose we're going to use on the uh, Roebuck. And to be honest, you can shoot you know, down with us. You, we, we shoot Chinese water deer, muntjac, fox. We do quite a lot of vermin, as you've seen before, with the squirrels, the varmints. You know, long distance rabbits when you can't get to them, crows, magpies are a bit of a problem where you can't catch them. It's quite an aggressive calibre, it burns a barrel out, but do you know what? I love it. I love it. And obviously up here, you can shoot roe deer with it, with a 55 grain soft nosed bullet. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Up here it's perfect for me. <laughs> Don't show this to those, but they'll be alright. <laughs> First up, Paul wants to check zero and has a cheeky little trick up his sleeve. Did I get him? Sorry, that technique of using the binos is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I, mean, I know bipods get expensive, but that is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah that's uh, versatility when you want minimal uh, equipment to take with you. <laughs> I do actually use it quite a bit, especially with my um, 15 power, they're a little bit bigger, so it gives you a little bit more height. Oh, really? So once you had a look, stick them down and pew! <laughs> so we've got people coming to the shop saying, yeah, can I have the uh, nice bipod? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tool, David, and it's, uh, you know, versatility is the name of this game. He is happy, so let's start with the beach. It's not exactly a speedos sort of day, but what a fantastic spot to hunt. The previous evening we had indeed encountered a buck on the dunes, but the wind wasn't in our favour and it was off towards the oil refinery. Classic, isn't it? So, yeah, we see robots on here now and again, and there he was. One of the problems that I have here is they dig a lot into the, the sand dunes. Oh, so right. Erosion. erosion, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be nice to take a, a rabbit or so. For us to cook tomorrow with a fire or something like that. Yeah, we give it a go. So we do, there is a lot of there is a lot of rabbits here. Yeah, uh, and they tend to go to the grazing grounds, but they they actually sleep, stay in the dunes. Yeah, we've been in the past with ferrets and stuff, but the boy was saying that yes, they sleep in the dunes and they go out at night to the grazing cook, fields. Yeah, yeah. Which is we cannot shoot them in the dunes. We can just cannot see them. Yeah. There's some spe something special anyway. Yeah. Different. To get the angle on this one, Paul manoeuvres the Saku 85 stainless. See him, David? Yeah. Left hand is shot here, boys. Left handed shoulder, they call me. <laughs> Left hander. Did you practice that? Huh? Did you practice that? No, no I didn't. No, do you practice that? Oh, yeah, 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 I do. <laughs> 
Well, when, when, you are, when you are gifted, you are gifted. <laughs> <laughs> like the water. <laughs> Sergio tries to call some out. It works, and Paul takes another. Bunnies for brunch. Serge called that in, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, perfect. Good job, Serge. We might have to have a bit of a um, call off because obviously you're pretty good at the row books. Uh -huh. You did a pigeon a second ago. Uh -huh. We actually have a bit of a collar dog. I can call you a collar dog. Collar dog, is it? So we might have to have a bit of a animal impersonation off. Can <laughs> <laughs> you dance at the same time? Well, what about wobble. that? I can wobble. <laughs> I will say dance, but I can wobble. <laughs> Are they salty? The rabbits. It's already seasoned, just need a bit of pepper. <laughs> She's already dead. Next stop is a sheep farm. There are two ewes down. One is alive. This one is not, with evidence of Covid attack. Time to put the 22250 to work on some foxing or a long range crow. Ah, that's a good shot. That is a good shot. A crow it is. <laughs> Thanks, Serge. I'll take that from you. Where were you on that? Then? Two inches above it. 22.250 power, isn't it? 2.26. Our final stop is farmland, where Sergio has witnessed the comings and goings of some decent bucks while he's been stalking with other clients. Is it? Pheasant jerky. Benson. Pheasant jerky. Mm. Mm -hmm. My little pack, isn't it? Mm. Made by the fair man himself. Right. Sweet chilli. Mm. It's, it's, it's not that spicy, though. It's not quite like that, though. We encounter a young buck en route. Sergio needs to manage the situation to stop it heading back and disturbing the animals we are hoping to get onto. Giving it a wide berth works. Nice young six pointer, probably be better next year, so let them grow on a bit and that's what we do is basically just scoot out in the field and he come back down this plantation so he didn't go at the top and spook his deer that possibly come out of this plantation is mature forestry. Okay. So that was the plan. So he manipulated the situation by... Yeah, just going out into the field, give it a bit of space so the buck can run back past us. Cool. So yeah, good plan Serge. So what happened here is there is two groups. There is some that come direct into this field. Yeah. But there also there is some that come in and they're gonna gonna go down that tree line. Okay. Yeah. And they they tend to go pretty fast. There's two bucks that tend to go pretty fast, and they go they go they go, and they end up in the bottom where they come from. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. They just follow that way. So instead of us hoping and then make the move when they are out, we're gonna go a bit further down, where the the, the there's a wee slope. Yeah. And it will be better, yeah. shelter from the wind as well. Yeah, yeah, cool idea. <laughs> cold wind. Because it's cold. So. Cold. It's lovely in May up here, isn't it? Yes. End of May, yes. yeah. 10 degrees. Unbelievable, isn't it? Everything's yeah, just crazy. held back. We, it is we, cold. We, we, we had a lot of snow beginning of May. We had white. Really? Yes, it was absolutely covering snow. Everything's so slow this year. Look at the trees, so yeah. behind. We are a lot behind than you guys are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always are. Yeah. Know? The rut is behind, so we can do you can do the rut in your place and come back instead oh, of right. the rut here. Yeah. Yeah, it's when, when are you then? Uh, last July, beginning of August. Yeah, it's about, it's about the same really. Right, but yeah. it's all, I always see the posts, people. Yeah, there, but get everyone posted. gets excited early, doesn't they? Yeah, well, well good. Come so, the thermals on, we'll be all right. You have the thermals on? Yeah. Good. For a change, this will be a waiting game. Sergio says things will happen at 21.30 hours. He said half nine, yeah. Yes. Half nine. Okay. So if he comes early, it doesn't count. If he comes, if he comes 9.25, we'll not shoot it, okay? Okay. Okay. Like a spike.
Men David? Ja. Perfekt. <laughs> Thank you very much. Pressure is on there. Well done, sir. Five like minutes that. late. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it. I want to see it. Where's the, where's the phone? You said 9.30. Oh, not bad. <laughs> Five minutes late. He didn't come to us, though. We went to him. Hey. Not have the cake and eat it. <laughs> well done. Very good. Very good, yeah, like exhilarating. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. We could have got, to be honest with you, what was he, 180 something to start with, was he? I started with 106. Yeah. And do you know what? Yeah, I could have shot him from there, possibly. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, why not make sure? It, we could have pushed it further. As no. soon as she, she, she was on this, yeah. She was on to it. Yeah, as but soon as she went away. Yeah, it, it, yeah, gone. yeah. So that, that was good. To get a few more, to get a few more more yards on him, a few more meters in him, just one to make sure. Five, five. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. Excellent. Good finish. For the coldness. It's not, it's not a massive. Box. No, it's it, nice it seems, though. It seems old. I think it could be just a four point. I don't know. It looks quirky. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Clean off a little bit. Oh yeah, huh? New, really? He's thick, isn't he? Yeah. Character on him. Well, He's ripped ear as well. Old oh, fighter. Yeah. And the twenty-two to fifty did the job. Yeah. Just. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. He's a nice boy. Yeah. He's lovely. It has been several days packed into one, and as a fellow deer manager, Paul knows how hard roe stalking guides have to work. The trouble is here is just such with roe deer in general. Anyone that does a lot of roe deer, I take my hat off to them because they're basically starting at 3 30, 4 o'clock to get out, especially if they've got to travel, and then they're finishing at last knocking. What time now? We are 10 o'clock all but, taking it back, it's going to be back 11 o'clock then you've got to get yourself sorted out ready for the next morning. So you hit in bed about 12 o'clock, so you get like three and a half, four hours sleep. You don't sleep so well, you know you've got to get up, you don't want to miss the alarm clock. So doing that four or five days on the trot, you earn your money. <laughs> <laughs> don't you? It's not, it's not a, dream, a dream job like many people think. Yeah. I know when it's raining as well, when it's raining and blowing and windy. If you have a client coming from abroad, already booked, Month and month in advance, yeah. if it's rain or snow, whatever it yeah. is, yeah. you have to take them out anyway. Yeah. But, uh, and they expect you to, to produce. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. yeah. But it's great. It's and good. you have done. Good. Yeah, exactly. Let's go have something to eat because I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to stalk Ray with Sergio, go to circuitwildharvest.com. And for more information about Sacco rifles, go to sacco.fi. Plus, you can find Paul Childerly on Instagram and Facebook links in the description below. Thanks, Paul. A calibre so versatile, it's practically bendy. Talking of which, here's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Environmentalist Ben Goldsmith has proved he's not a Field Sports News viewer. On Tuesday, he gushed on Twitter about how wolves are roaming free across Europe, but not here in the UK, saying the animals are not scary or problematic as some people claim, and it's laughable to oppose reintroducing them. If he had been watching Field Sports News, Goldsmith would have seen our report last August about how livestock attacked by wolves in parts of Germany doubled in a year. He would also have heard about the massacre by wolves of 90 sheep at a farm in Kosovo in December. Between 2020 and 2016, an annual average of 19,500 sheep were reported killed by wolves across the EU. In Norway and France, that equated to 30 sheep per wolf. Get with the programme, Ben, 
or even walk your dog in some of these not scary wolf habitats. While Justice has pulled a blog post complaining about a hunting article, BBC celebrity Chris Packham's group removed the piece titled Alleged Breach of General Licenses and added a back later to the headline. The original page was a dissection of a Shooting Times article from February in which a contributor described shooting 10 different species of wildlife in a day. While Justice put out a statement saying it wrote to DEFRA Secretary George Eustace to ask whether the shooter should have his general license permissions taken away. The group promised to keep readers updated, only to remove the post a couple of days later. Staying with Mr Packham, and it appears that a fundraising regulator has crumbled under the weight of his celebrity status. The BBC TV personality is accused of misleading the public when soliciting donations for his Wild Heart Trust Zoo in the Isle of Wight by claiming tigers and lions held there were abused by their former owners, then rescued. Country Squire website explained to the regulator that some were donated when the owner had nowhere to keep them after animal rights campaigners pestered authorities into restricting how circuses use land. The regulator told Country Squire that Packham's use of the word rescued instead of donated was a touch of hyperbole and not misleading. In a letter it said it's not going to do anything. Country Squire says it's been told by Packham's lawyers to remove articles about the big cats but it is refusing to budge. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association says any prospect of a coalition with the Greens will lead to more protests. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon announced talks with the Greens last week that could lead to the creation of a Green Minister. The SGA says this would put thousands of countryside jobs at risk and see angry rural workers, their families and supporters taking to city streets in protest. This is the promotional video for the Rural Workers' Protest 2021 that the SGA put out. Behaving more like a hate group than a political party, the Green Party threatens in its latest manifesto to end what it calls blood sports. A shocked farmer has posted photos of his Highland cow that died after being chased by dogs. Cameron Farquharson says Gladys was killed on Egerton Hill in Dorset when walkers let their dogs chase her to death, which also killed her full-term unborn calf. He urged people to keep dogs on leads when out walking. Intolerant Buddhists in the Scottish borders are at it again. As we've already covered, monks at a Tibetan compound in Eskdale Muir have been complaining about a nearby shooting range, which they claim disturbs the peace at the monastery. Now the monks want to shut down all ranges in Scotland, near places of national, spiritual, tourist and cultural importance. A label that could loosely apply to the monastery. After Eskdale Muir residents gained 20,000 signatures, most from abroad, on a change.org petition, Dr Conrad Harvey from NHS Scotland's Spiritual Care Committee has also set up a Scottish Parliament petition. The monastery tells Facebook users they don't need to be Scottish to sign the petition. This season's school's pistols championship has come to a climax with the national final and the top three senior winners are all girls. More than 100 competitors across all the regions in the UK shot national final competition targets remotely and submitted their scores and targets. This footage shows earlier years where they competed together. National champion 2020-2021 is Charlotte Hicks from Cornwall and school team winner is Ellesmere College. Thanks to Andy McGarty for sending in the story. There's an unusual charity event coming up in September. GWCT Gloucestershire is holding a full bore rifle shooting competition in this quarry on Sunday the 5th of September. You can enter as a team of four and it's team entry only, plus a valid FAC is required. Entry fee is £600 per team. Sponsors include Blaza, Harkila and Pulsar and WMS Firearms Training is organising the day. Book online at gwct.org.uk forward slash rifle event. A vulture on a rare visit to the Netherlands has been killed by a wind turbine. According to the Vulture Conservation Foundation, the bearded vulture was part of a breeding programme to boost the population in Europe. Instead, it was cut down mid-flight by turbine blades in Veringwerf. Bearded vultures, which can have a three-metre wingspan, are on the near-threatened list for the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. The bird, called Angel, was released last year in France and tracking devices showed 
its journey north. Police in Bangladesh say they've arrested a notorious tiger poacher. Habib Tulukdar is suspected of killing 70 tigers in the past two decades along the border between India and Bangladesh. The area is home to the world's largest population of Bengal tigers. Police had issued three arrest warrants for the poacher. With media coverage waning for the campaign against trophy hunting, its founder is preparing to write yet another book. The MO of Eduardo Concalves is to write books about trophy hunters and use their photographs without copyright permission. And it scored him free press from the likes of anti-hunting journalist Nada Fahoud in the Daily Mirror. A hunting outfitter in Namibia reports that Concalves called them trying to find out the names of their clients. Concalves is pictured on the left of this group, which Google has auto-categorised as senior citizens. And finally, a happy ending for Springer Spaniels taken from a garden in East Yorkshire. Owners Keith and Liz Fetchers were reunited with their three gun dogs, Keedy, Robbie and Jazz, after three months apart. Thieves took the dogs in an overnight raid in February. Keedy was found after he was taken to a vet in Kent by someone who'd bought him online. The charity Dog Lost had already spotted suspicious adverts for the dogs on a pet sales website, which were later deleted. The police have made no arrests, but are working on the case with Pets for Homes, the site where the dogs were listed for sale. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, a quick word about this week's competition. It's a draw for this Crossman 2300T, a 200 pound air pistol that's one of the standards for target air pistol shooting. If you want to find out more about the competition and to enter, the easiest way is to watch Field Sports Extra, the show we put out on Tuesday for our supporters from the Field Sports Nation. There's a link in the description below on how to join them. Now, you might know Tom Davis as a deer stalker, rabbit shooter and fox shooter. Well, he's also an angler. Today, he's on a mission to find out what's in the lakes. Can you use a modern thermal spotter to find fish? They are there, swimming around in full view, but how about when they're out of sight? If you can, it will revolutionise match fishing, salmon fishing, trout fishing, you name it. Deer stalker Tom Davis is a thermal spotter addict. He has the new Pulsar Accolade 2 LRF Pro XP55 grand's worth of thermal binoculars. The answer to the fish question? Well, nearly. You can just make out this big carp moving right and left in this footage, but maybe only because the cold-blooded fish has been warmed by the hot June sunshine and its great dorsal fin is out of the water. When it comes down to it, Tom is happier finding fish the old-fashioned way. Yeah. This is where Tom Davis grew up. His dad has the Hatchlands Fly Carp and Horse Fishery in South Devon. Um, so we got the Trout Lake here. Um, yeah, this is where I mainly concentrated. And then we got a Silverfish Lake for match fishing. Um, but there are some slightly bigger carp in there now because it's, you know, it's been going on for so many years. And then one big carp lake at the back. Tom's dad closed the fishery during the COVID lockdown. But fish don't stop just because anglers are all at home. Today, Tom is finding out what fish have escaped to where, and that's why he wants to spot fish. And in each lake, there are fish he hopes he won't spot. Invasive species, you don't want to see them in your sort of, your still water lakes. Anything that can get back into like the local rivers is a big no-no. <laughs> so, so, so what's your sort of public enemy number one? Uh, 
pike, that would be number one. Perch, that's a good one, you don't want that. Um, you know, we're gonna do a couple of different types of trout already. Um, rainbow is the main one, and then we've seen a few blues coming through as well. So, um, you do get the odd wild brownie that comes through as well, it comes in from the river. Um, but the chance of us seeing one of those today is probably gonna be slim. We head up to the Silver Lake where the match fishermen go and where there are populations of roach and bream and carp and... Yeah, yeah, so we found a trout in the Silverfish Lake. Um, obviously, we need to get that one out, um, but that's just gone down the pipe of the trout lake into the Silverfish Lake. Um, there is no outlet of the Silverfish Lake into the rivers, so nothing can escape, but that, you know, it's gone from one lake to the other. He can't get near the errant brownie, but he can move up yet another lake and have a go at some of the specimen carp with a fly. <laughs> you were really fast on the take. Have you got to be that fast? Um, no, I just, I went on sight instead of like, Phil then, I saw the fly disappear so and I struck. You, you, you bogged it, didn't you? Yeah, I messed it up. <laughs> the carp in there could range up to about 30 pound. I mean, you know, I'm going back probably 10 years now and I, you know, I've had some 18s, 19s out of there. Um, so presuming those are still in there, you know, they're gonna be a decent size. Um, I know some late 20s have been caught. Um, and there's plenty in there, there's bream in there, um, there's tench in there and also red and roach as well, but that's it's mainly a carp lake. Yeah. Tom's biggest fish on the fly is 11 pounds, but not today. <laughs> the man we know as deer stalker, <laughs> rabbit and fox shooter started his sporting life as a five-year-old fly fisherman. In my younger days, I was, um, yeah, I used to do a lot. It was fishing more than shooting. Um, well, yeah, fishing was like my life, basically. Every day I was down here casting or actually fishing. Um, I uh, started at the age of five, actually fly fishing. So that was when my dad taught me. And then, uh, yeah, my dad, I think, got a bit fed up because I wanted to go every day. So I had to wait for some local fishermen to come in to be able to go because I wasn't allowed down here on my own. <laughs> I fished um, in the England team for, um, I think it was four years I'd done. You know, went all over the UK, fishing different reservoirs, went to Ireland. Um, yeah, it was, it was a good experience. It was good. And then as I got older, I just, yeah, shooting sort of took over then. Tom goes to great lengths to find fish here, even taking to the trees with a GoPro. And it's worth it to get these shots of carp. You want help? <laughs> <laughs> There's one exotic species here, that wasn't around when Tom was growing up. It is like, they are like little dinosaurs, aren't they? Yeah, they're strange looking things. They actually appeared when I moved out. So it's like, a, yeah, a, another child. <laughs> Definitely a replacement. <laughs> One thing that's pleasing Tom is the work his father and his father's mate, Pete, have been doing during COVID lockdown. Yeah, during the lockdown period, obviously the fishery was closed um, for a short period of time. Um, so during that, they've done a lot of work. You know, they've done the, the track, made that nice and well, drivable because it was a bit rough. Um, and then sort of levelled off all the ground, made the banks better for fishing off on the coarse fishing lakes. Um, so yeah, they're just trying to make it easier for everyone. Tom heads back down to the first lake and just makes sure there are still rainbow trout in that one. Yep, there are.
more about Hatchlands, go to hatchlandstroutfarm.co.uk. Thank you, Tom, and thanks to Tom's dad and Tom's dad's mate, Pete, for letting me come and film at Hatchlands. Now, I promised Peter Meek from the Muntjac Hunters Group on Facebook that I would mention his latest competition, which is to win all sorts of Muntjac decorative items. Click on the link in the description below to find out more. Next, you may have heard of the banks and credit card reader companies that lump playgrounds in with terrorist training camps in their terms and conditions. News editor Ben O'Rourke has been looking at how animal rights extremists are trying to exclude hunting and shooting from the economy. Okay. Nice one. See you later. <laughs> Cheers now. Hello. Um, it was overnight, no warning whatsoever. It was just, you shut down and that's it. Don't use it, don't advertise our PayPal logo, don't do anything. And we're keeping your money, by the way. Dave Bamlett owns a gun shop in Darlington, County Durham. Viewers might remember him from our story in 2020 about lockdowns and the gun trade, where he introduced a regular visitor, Bob the Pigeon. Sadly, Bob hasn't been back since the lockdowns. We had Bob who visited us every day for a nice handful of corn. He wasn't loyal during lockdown and while the shutters were closed, he's went on to pastures new. But we've got a tribute to Bob, which is our little plastic decoy hung from the ceiling. Bob is the least of Dave's problems, which for the past couple of years have been finding payment systems and banks that will deal with his business. Increasingly, gun shops and shooting ranges are finding themselves dumped without notice by companies like SumUp, often only finding out when payments don't go through. SumUp, um, Square, I can't remember, I've pro there'd be a big list of everything that you can think of, basically. Um, we've tried them all. PayZone, iZettle, that was another one. We actually got their little card machine, read the terms and conditions, and amongst pornography, gambling, and gun dealers are one of the ones that's not allowed. So that was that one sent back. Elevon wanted to know if we had weapons of mass destruction, cluster bombs and chemical weapons amongst one of the questions that they asked. We were running fine with PayPal for years. And then overnight, we got an email to say we now shut down. So we're not allowed to use PayPal, not allowed to have it on the website, anything. So that was that. And they were keeping £1,200 of our money as well for six months or 180 days. And then they would review it at the end to see if we were worth getting it back, which we did eventually in any case. Doing what we do, I automatically opened a second PayPal address <laughs> and carried on. And that got shut down within two days along with my personal um, account, Rachel's personal account, and anything that was logged onto our Wi-Fi at home at the time was also shut down if it had anything to do with PayPal. With the Information Commission and the Data Protect Protection Act 2018, Article 14 specifically prohibits the use of geolocation services, except if you've got a reason to do it, which all banks would be easily able to turn around and say, we have a reason to do this. And I think it's because they're adding a value added service. But what they also need to do is to say very explicitly in their terms and conditions, this is what they're doing and this is what you're opting into. And so technically they're, they're complying with the law and most banks and financial institutions want to try and do some sort of geolocation stuff. I, I get quite a lot of it, even though I'm using a virtual private network, but I think most field sports organizations and businesses probably should be using VPNs. They do help you in this regard. Dave has heard of people being dumped by PayPal while it still held tens of thousands of pounds of their money. We did find a loophole for anyone else that gets trapped into this. You can't withdraw the money, you can't close your account, you can't do anything, but you can give refunds. So what we did, we contacted all our customers and said, we're going to refund you. So we got quite a bit of money back like that. It's just an uphill struggle all the time of who to deal with and why it's such a restricted business because we're one of the most vetted people out there and so are the people that walk through the door. It is a barrier for small organisations and there is this really grey area. I mean, you know, you can raise money on PayPal and Patreon and various other things, 
that goes directly into your purse into a personal bank account. I do think the government and regulators need to have a closer look at this because it's very easy to be, I don't know, a, a violent sort of extremist group or even just a group who, who've got some pretty you know, un, unsavory tactics and to raise money in a way that would be very difficult to do if you had to be a charity or some sort of regulated organisation. The League Against Cruel Sports recently bullied a small auction website called Jumblebee with its followers menacing the site's owners until they stopped allowing legal hunt organisations to use it. The animal rights charity brags that masses of tweets and 2,600 emails were sent to Jumblebee, a small company that mainly helps charities and schools. They're pressuring and bullying small organisations who who are trying to do something a bit entrepreneurial because they, they fundamentally disagree with them. I don't have a problem with them like disagreeing with them or running their campaigns. That's fine. It's they're a charity and they're, they're, they, the charity regulator, as we've discussed several times before, is incredibly toothless. You know, they don't really do very much. Some companies in the financial sector have a reputation for being helpful to field sports businesses. We rang Basque Trade, asked if they could help us, help us out with who to work with. Uh, they suggested go and see Barclays. So we rang them up, made an appointment first thing I mentioned was we were in the gun trade and they said that's fine we'll go through the questionnaire an hour into it she decided to ring her boss and said you know the guns were involved cancelled straight away not allowed an account not allowed anything goodbye we've done that two more times with Barclays but a lot of people are mentioning Barclays and they've had Barclays accounts for 20 years I think it's just different branch managers who are making up their own guidelines, rules, whatever. It's not just gun shops and shooting ranges that have had problems. We've had a few too. When we set about selling shares in Field Sports Channel PLC, which is a complicated process. You just don't go out and say, hi, would you want to buy some shares? You know, you've got to get various kinds of regulation. And one of the easy ways to do it is to go through one of the crowdfunding networks. And there are two big ones in the UK. There's Crowdcube based in Exeter and there's Cedars based in London. So we signed up for Crowdcube. The first thing they said was, don't try and do this yourself. Get a guide, get somebody to help you. And that cost a few thousand quid. So we did that. Uh, and we went through the process with Crowdcube with the help of our guide. We spent the money. At the end of it, Crowdcube said no. Our guide told us that Crowdcube decided not to go with us because they said they're vegan and they don't support what Field Sports Channel does. So we went to Cedars, but we did say, first of all, do you have any problem with shooting or hunting as a, as a thing? And Cedars said, no. The guy I spoke to said, no, absolutely not. He said, uh, two of our senior management team are keen shooters. Once again, we got through the process and they said no. And this time, the guy I was speaking to at Cedars said to me, look, the problem is we are pro shooting, but we're terrified of animal rights extremists. You know, they might come and burn down our house. So we can't look like we're supporting Field Sports Channel's PLC just because of that. If you are rejected, I would consider looking for a new merchant, talking with your bank, use a VPN. And also for some companies, rather than calling yourself gun shop in the name of your company, you may want to be change the name of your company to something far more anodyne and you may have a trading name. But the, the relationship you will have will be through your company name. And so that may afford you slightly better terms and conditions or treatment from some of these companies. Thanks, Ben. Now from the dry old world of money to the rich tapestry that is this week's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Here is the last film that Zach Goldsmith wants to see. The anti-hunting former MP now peer is trying to ban hunting tourism. And here is the respected Economist magazine putting out a film saying he is wrong. Johnny from TGS Outdoors has teamed up with his buddy Ryan to launch TGS Air, a new YouTube channel dedicated to air guns. This is episode one, where they look at air gun related gear and shoot a competition with a pistol from the past. German channel Hunting Room is in the 
Serbian Vojdovinia. Tim and Jens are shooting unusual bucks and mainly at more than 200 metres. Now, academic stuff. Don't change channels. This is good. Dr Amy Dickman from Oxford University is one of the top people on human wildlife conflict and big cat encounters and often crosses swords, well, pens, with do-gooder aunties. She talks here for nearly an hour on the Tommy's Outdoors podcast. Another podcast, this one in French, thanks to Andrew Gibbons for recommending Richard Sutter, who is becoming a big noise in the pro-hunting debate in France. Here he talks about how hunting helps your mental health. I spoke to the guys at the Hunt Stand app a few weeks ago. Here is Hunt Stand resident biologist Brian Murphy joining the National Wild Turkey Federation for a Spring Turkey Hunt at Char Lane, a property owned by rock star Chuck Lavelle, who has played with the Allman Brothers Band and the Rolling Stones. Another rock star, thanks to Clay Tall Stories in New Zealand, who recommends this film by the Brochek Club. Selwyn shoots a yearling red deer trapped by a fence and then gets quite movingly philosophical about what it's like to be trapped. And finally, Rodney Stotts is one of the few black falconers in the US. A new documentary, The Falconer, this is the trailer, follows him working with raptors and inner city kids. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. Please don't hesitate to like and share. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube and pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain, it's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. <laughs>